class we are going to learn about work of glaciers. So like rivers and winds, glaciers have played important role in shaping and formation of new landforms. So today we will see to those type of landforms which glaciers have formed uh, by its erosional and depositional work. So what are glaciers? Glaciers are large body of ice which have been formed because of accumulation of snow over a period of time. So when snow accumulates layer over layer, then it gets compacted and it becomes a rigid body of glacier. So there are three types of glaciers which we are going to write. Number one is continental glacier. Number two is mountain or valley glacier. And number three is Piedmont glacier. Okay, what are continental glaciers? Continental glaciers are glaciers which are spread over large area, for example, Arctic and Antarctic. Mountain and valley glaciers. Mountain and valley glaciers develop along the mountain slopes and valleys at a higher altitude. And these glaciers, they move slowly down the slope and after they cross the snow line, they tend to melt and form small, small streams. So now what is a snow line? Snow line is a limit or a boundary between the area which is perpetually covered by snow and the area which is not. So below snow line, the snow melts uh, during summer season or during a warmer climate. And above that snow line, the snow remains as it is. It does not melt. So the line which demarcates the snow covered area and the area which is not covered by snow, that line is known as snow line. Next is Piedmont Glacier. So Piedmont Glaciers are glaciers that we find at the foot of mountains. Now when the glaciers are moving from highland to lowland, then it does the work of erosion as well as deposition. So most of the erosional landforms are seen when it is moving from highland towards the lowland. So all the erosional features that we are going to study is confined only to the highlands through which the glaciers are moving. And towards the lowland it does the work of deposition. So suppose this is a mountain. This is a highland. This is a lowland. Here we have glaciers. So when these glaciers are moving from highland to lowland, it covers a, so, a, a certain distance. So when it is moving from here to here, all the erosional works that it does is confined to this area. Till here it does the work of erosion. Then after that, it flows as water, it starts melting and it flows as streams or rivers, then it does the work of deposition. So when this ice is moving from highland towards the ocean, then when it approaches towards the ocean, when it comes near to the ocean, then it starts breaking into large chunks. Those large chunks or large pieces of ice is known as iceberg. Let us see too, the original landforms formed by the glaciers. So glacier erodes its valley in two ways. One is plucking and other is abrasion. So plucking is a process by which the glacier breaks and pulls the rock that is present in its way. And in abrasion, the surface of glacier wears away the surface which comes into its contact while moving. These are the two processes through which glacier does the work of erosion. Number one, Erosional landform is quarry or cirque. Now what is a quarry or cirque? Suppose this is a mountain slope. So the glaciers are present here. So when these glaciers move downwards, some erosion is performed in this area. 
and with the time this place acquires the shape of armchair like this so this type of armchair like structure on the slope of the mountain or a valley is known as quarry next after quarry we have a reed now what is a reed then this type of quarry develops on the adjacent side of the mountain slope here suppose say this is one quarry back cutting is done and another quarry also develops along <coughs> the adjacent slope of the mountain here here also back cutting is done so with this two quarries on the adjacent side the middle portion which act as a boundary between these two quarry it is left very high rigid and a very sharp featured so this boundary is known as a reed after this pyramidal peak so what is a pyramidal peak when quarry is developed on all the side of the mountain because of erosion from all the sides only a top portion a uh, top portion is left out so that top portion is known as pyramidal peak so we have one quarry here one quarry here and we have several other quarries on all the side of this mountain so this portion which is left out is known as pyramidal peak next we have is hanging valley so in glaciated regions we have valleys through which main ice moves and we also have small small tributary valley tributary valleys through which a uh, small amount of ice move towards the main uh, main valley so suppose this is your main valley this is small small valleys which are coming towards the main valley so this main valley is carrying a large amount of ice because of which it gets eroded faster and it is deeper as compared to the tributary valley which is carrying a small amount of ice with them so this valleys are bigger and deeper whereas this small small tributary valleys are smaller and shallower then the main valley so as a result this valley tributary valley seems like hanging above the main valley so this is known as hanging valley this type of feature is called hanging valley after hanging valley we have truncated spur so here we have tributary valley from this tributary valley is also ice tends to move outwards forming small small channels so this dissected part this dissected spur which is cut by small small streams or small small rivers coming out from this tributary uh, channel or tributary valley this type of dissected spur is known as truncated spur because it is cut into several parts after truncated spur we have So another feature we have is a glacial trough or u-shaped valley now what are this u-shaped valley or glacial trough so when the glaciers move on already existing v-shaped valley they does the work of down cutting as well as side cutting because of their huge size when they move they, do, they does the work of down cutting and side cutting simultaneously because of which u-shaped valley is formed suppose this is a v-shaped valley which is already existing here on which the glacier moves this is the glacier huge block of ice is moving through this v shaped valley so when it is moving it does the work of side cutting as well as down cutting simultaneously because of which this u shaped valley is created which is also known as glacial trough after that we have roches montagnes roches montagnes is a french word which means back of the shape 
because this structure looks somewhat like back of tree, like this. So it is a small, small hillox that has developed because of combined effect of abrasion and plucking. When both abrasion and plucking works together, then this type of hillock is formed. This is known as Rochester Mountain. So when glacier is moving, suppose this is glacier, it is moving towards the right side, this side. It is moving from here. So this portion is succeeded by abrasion. Abrasion is done in this side. And when glaciers slowly move towards right side, then plucking is done in this side. Small, small fragments of rock that is present here, it gets pulled away or plucked away because of the effect of glacier. So this type of structure with one side rough and other side uh, very steep and smooth, this type of structure is known as Roches Mountainous. Next we have scrag and tail. So when glaciers move on uh, the structure made out of hard rock and soft rock, it tends to erode more of soft rock than hard rock. So suppose this is a hard rock and this is a soft rock. So when glacier moves above this soft rock and hard rock, it erodes more of soft rock. So this rock is eroded more easily than the hard rock. Whereas hard rock remains as it is. So this portion is known as crag and this small portion is known as tail. Now next we have is a fjord. What are fjord? Fjords are a narrow inlet with a very steep sides which are mostly visible towards the polar regions where the distance between ice line and sea level is less. Next is crevas. What are crevas? Crevas are small uh, cracks or fractures which develops when glaciers move along the bend of mountains. Suppose this is a mountain. So when the glaciers are moving from here downwards so in this bend it also cannot bend accordingly so it will break so this crack or fracture which occurs on glaciers when it moves along the bends is known as crevasse now what are bergestured bergestured are also a type of crevasse but they are deeper and wider as compared to crevasse and it is created because of alternate freezing and thawing process. When there is a small crack on the glacier, snow happens to accumulate on that small crack. And what happens to the snow that is accumulated in the crack? It undergoes the process of freezing and thawing. Uh, in this, uh, uh, in the, during the night, the water or the ice that is present in the crack, that freezes. And during the daytime, it melts. Because of alternate freezing and thawing, the crack gets widened and deeper and deeper. So the deeper and wider cracks that develops at the glacier head is known as bergstern and small small cracks and fracture that occurs in the glacier because of the uh, because of their movement down the bends are known as crevasse. So with this, we complete the erosional landforms of glaciers.